Hi, welcome to everyone's favourite segment, Mailbag. Let's get into it. Thank you very much, B Butcher from Derbyshire in the UK. Derbyshire, Derbyshire. I don't know. Leave it in the comments. Hi to all my viewers in the old dark. Let's crack it open. If you want to send stuff in, PO Box 7949, Norwest, New South Wales, 2153, Australia, not Austria. Thank you very much. Okay, hang on. Oh, it's taped. All right. For our protection, we have an extensive note in nice big font so I can read it. You know, eyes up what they used to be. I've <laughs> been doing YouTube too long. Anyway, up to, wow, wow. This is seriously padded. This must have cost a bit to send from the old dart. Um, you know, it's like on the other side of the planet. Oh, thank you very much for the bubble wrap. Can always reuse bubble wrap. It's a lot of bubble wrap. Must be delicate. I'm getting that. We're close. Oh, oh, what is this thing? I don't know. You can see it. I can't. What is it? <laughs> Let's have a look. It's got a big whopping heat sink on the back. Some weird uh, sort of custom pin connector. It's a Dancon RT403B. One watt, 25. Oh, it's a, um, it, it's a CB. Transmitter, CB, another UHF rubbish, um, isn't it? Like, or is it a UH? I, I don't know the UK, like, standards and stuff. Oh, made in Holland? What are my viewers in Holland? <laughs> I know, there's some debate. Let's read the note. Greetings from England, the old art. My parents recently bought an old riverboat in the nether regions, uh, which they plan to sail down France to the coast to COVID-19, permitting, of course. <laughs> you haven't got freedoms. You know, you're on a boat in the middle of nowhere, but no, you're not allowed to go anywhere. Great. Uh, the boat's vintage transceiver radio. Ah, oh, it's a boat radio. Didn't work, so they replaced it with a new one and throw the old one away. You grabbed it for the mailbag. Thank you very much. Features some very early ICs to select the channels. Fantastic. Uh, the documentation not only lists all the radio's components as schematics, of course it had schematics. Yeah, they stopped supplying this decades ago. Anyway, right to repair videos on EV Blog 2. I've got an uh, excellent, some excellent videos over there from the recent Australian Right to Repair Summit, so check that out. And yes, I agree as a society, we really need to go back to being able to carry out basic repairs to all consumer goods to extend their useful life. Yes, I agree, and I've uh, got my reasons over on my second channel, so check it out. So he did manage to get some magic smoke to escape. Um, thank you very much, Ben. Ben Butcher. Awesome. <laughs> Two minute teardown. Could be a bit more than two minutes because it's going to have lots of RFE goodness. They don't make manuals like this anymore. Let's have a squiz. Oh, somebody's got some handwritten notes. Handbook. Oh, trouble. Look at this. So, general description, circuit description, troubleshooting, alignment, all the diagrams, everything. You could possibly... Look at this. Look at this. Oh, thing of beauty. Joy forever. Look at this. For the different functional units, the exciter, modulation amplifier, troubleshooting tips or voltage and frequency test points and stuff, alignment of the synthesizer, the exciter, the VHF driver, ah, oh, and the schematics. Just beautiful. Look at this. Like, it's not hard to release this sort of information. You already have it at the design stage anyway. So like, ah, oh, man. And a bomb as well. <laughs> Fantastic. Like, why can't we do this? Oh, purchase. Oh, look at this. 1978. Fantastic. I can't read Danish, but I'm sure that says uh, certificate of guarantee or something like that. Ah, oh, I have no idea what any of this says. <laughs> that looks pretty recent. And is that an addendum? Nope. Spelling alphabet. Oh, okay. So hands up if you use one of these bad boys. Look at this. One watt. 25 watts. Oh, swamp the airwaves. Fantastic. These are uh, very reminiscent of the uh, uh, knobs I have on my uh, Keithley. Old school Keithley gear. So very nice. Don't know what... Oh, that's... Uh, oh, backlight. Okay, that'd be a backlight for in there, I would imagine. And on the back, there we go. That's very special. Um, obviously, maybe that, I don't know, is that a marine standard thing? Leave it in the comments. Well, it turns out there's no screws on this, so it's just a couple of knobs on the side. So, oh, oh, there we go. Oh, look at that, look at that. Oh, God, you can tune everything. 
Yep, classic late 70s construction. Oh, look at these. The dual bodge chip. Wow, hang on. Wow, that's something quite special, actually. Um, <laughs> they've got a, nut, got a chip under there, and then they soldered the socket on top of that chip. Wow, that's a Bobby Dazzler. Look at that. And then they've broken off a pin and taken that out as well. <laughs> nice work. Only a two minute teardown, of course, but we've got ourselves some metal shield, got a penetrator that goes through here. You can see it's soldered down to the copper plane on the board in there. And yes, tons of slugs for adjustment. No idea, they're Motorola jobbies. Is that a 4044? Got ourselves some poly put the kettle on caps there. And uh, there's no, there's no tag. Oh yeah, no, I was gonna say there's no tag tents. Yes, they are. There you go, blue. Not that orange rubbish. We got ourselves a big ass power resistor up there. Um, is that like a dummy load or something? And on the top side here, we got more of it. Oh, I love the heatsink. Check out that. The heatsink on the dip package. Have you ever seen one like that before? Wow. There you go. So is that a, like a TDA or something? TBA. Ooh, okay. Don't know it offhand, but uh, yeah, they've actually bolted on a heatsink. Sort of like a custom heatsink with a cutout for the chip and a bodge wire going to it. Nice. Check out the giant package trannies though. Look at this. They're enormous. I don't even know what that package is uh, called offhand. It ain't none of that TO92 rubbish, that's for sure, but transistors as far as the eye can see. There's actually only a couple of TO92s in there. Got a Sermit uh, trimmer and, yep, just regular axial stuff. And got some electrolytics up there. Some Fraco? Fraco electrolytics. Uh, West German. Oh, hands up if you've seen those. Any Fraco fanboys out there? Maybe. Anyway, the only interesting thing in here so what on earth is that PLCC package doing down in there? That looks pretty modern, doesn't it? Is that like some sort of, like considering that, yeah, it looks like all the mods, all the mod wires seem to be going off to this board because, you know, that, that's that mod wire going over to here. So I would assume that that's some sort of like, maybe even a like aftermarket um, hack or something, or they've just like taken an old design and they've modernized it with some decoder or something. Oh, yeah, leave it in the comments if you got any idea. I've got some funky looking relays up there. Yeah, big beasties. So what are they switching? Oh, I, I don't like maybe switching the load. And there's a the transmit stage there on the back of the heatsink. And yeah, the relays are on that board too. So they're, they're like, yeah, switching in the big power resistor there. And there's that mod board, so if anyone's got any idea, it's just, it's certainly uh, out of place technology-wise. Everything's surface mount, so that's a good, you know, 10 years at least, 10, 15 years ahead of uh, the rest of this. There's the money shot for the RF aficionados. Wow, ceramic package jobbies, nice. Of course, little uh, chokes for the power and stuff like that, so there you go. So I assume that they'd have like a metal stud on the bottom of them to go through to the yep 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 I can just see just see a big metal stud in there that goes through to the heatsink nice so that's a 25 watt RF transmitter so thank you very much Ben for sending that one in and of course all the schematics yes I agree they don't make them like this anymore why not like how hard is it like if anyone wants to steal your design they're gonna steal it like companies are going to work out this eventually that there's like, even if they just do it for a marketing gimmick, uh, like, why not? And our workbench of the week, it comes from Tony Albus. You may be familiar with the name because, ta-da, he has a YouTube channel. Check it out, only uh, just a smidge under 2K subs. Come on, let's get him up to 10K subs at least. Let's get him into the four, uh, the five digits. And um, yeah, lots of uh, test equipment -y stuff. So let's have a squiz at his bench here. This is um, just what, like he's got some off to the side here as well. Lots of RFE goodness, and he has actually listed everything in here. From left to right, 
we have a, a TTI. Um, it uh, worth searching for TTI stuff on eBay, by the way, because it's not a huge brand, but TTI can make some good stuff. Anyway, there's a, a TTI three gig uh, frequency counter TF nine thirty. There's a Marconi twenty four thirty two A counter there. Why you need two counters? You might want to, you know, if you're into your RFE stuff, you might want to be, you know, you're measuring your output frequency. You might want to measure your intermediate frequency at the same time. Then there's an old school uh, Marconi, Marconi radio test set. Um, absolutely fantastic. You can pick up lots of these radio communications rec comms receivers on eBay really cheaply. And they often have like, you know, sweep SIG gens in them and all sorts of stuff. So well worth looking out for those sorts of things. There's a two gig Enritsu Spectrum Analyzer there, old school stuff. And of course, he's a member of TEA, the Test Equipment Anonymous on <laughs> thread on the EV Blog Forum, which I think is probably one of, if not the biggest threads on the EV Blog Forum. It's absolutely, yeah. If you want to uh, discuss your test equipment problems, <laughs> then... <laughs> acquisition problems, then that's the place to be on the interwebs. And of course, we've got Siglet Scope, couple of uh, Keith Lee old school DMMs here. One's one of those ones with uh, the scanner uh, cards in it. Got an 01 uh, multimeter here for some extra digits. Old school Weller. There you go. One of those fixed temperature jobbies, Curie Point fixed temperature. Some old school power supply down here. One of those, um, I've got one of these uh, Voltcraft um, that come under various names. It's like, you know, 40 amps or something at uh, 15 volts and um, more power supplies. You can never have too many power supplies. And um, yep, a desoldering station. Is that a hot air station? I don't know the brand offhand. There's more miscellaneous gear down here. And that brings us to... Ta-da! The miscellaneous gear um, side of the bench, which is all the... Yeah, that's why he's a member of the Test Equipment Anonymous <laughs> forum section. <laughs> because, yeah, you tend to acquire these things on eBay. Probably got a, like a job lot here. Don't know what that is. Those are, I'm not sure. Old school meters up the top here. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's... it's like the old school, these slim form factors. I've I've had a couple of um, uh, I've done a couple of videos on like old school uh, meters and scopes. I've got a scope with the little CRT on it, which is uh, the old. Was that a TTI or was that a Sinclair? Can't remember. Old school Sig gens and stuff. Um, yeah, <laughs> tend to acquire these things. <laughs> Anyway, if you've got a problem, visit the Test Equipment Anonymous. I'll link it down below. Thanks, Tony. This one comes from Reedon, R-I-E-D-O-N. Thank you very much. I did actually open this because it didn't have mailbag on it. I get normal stuff sent here too, you know. They're from Alhambra in California. Um, I don't want my Californian viewers. All right, let's check it out. So I realized that it was a mailbaggy item, so I have not actually... Foam peanuts, hang on. Foam peanut alert. I'll check out the box in a sec, but here it is. We have probes, fantastic. That goes into a multimeter, obviously. And, ta-da, here it is. I haven't seen it. You opt, it, it, it's nothing in there. Jeez, it's got a, okay. It's got a big ass screen on it. It's got a switch, a fuse, and a big ass screen. No buttons, no nothing. And on the back, just a couple of um, banana plugs and uh, yeah, IEC mains. You put none of that earth pin rubbish either. Check that out. And a USB. So I do believe it's a USB current meter. It's a game changer. It's a smart current sense, the new kid on the block. Hi Dave, Reedon is a US manufacturer of resistors and shunts. Oh, cool, okay. Yeah, I have heard the name before. I don't think I've ever used them though. Close, you'll find one of our new products, the SSA 100. It's a unique combination of features that's available on DigiKey from 100 to 1000 amps. So, okay, we're up in the big leagues. I'm kind of a, like a nano amp and micro amp kind of guy myself. But uh, yeah, for those big current aficionados, this could be cool. It's an amplified and reinforced isolated analog current sensor with 12.5 millivolts per amp output. It has a UL approval, all the requisite stuff, uh, 1500 volts isolation. Sensor needs a three to five volt supply, sent along with an Arduino based current sensor meter. 
uh, uses 24-bit ADC, etc, etc. And it's available on the GitHubs. Thank you very much, Phil um, Ebbett, who's the Vice President of Engineering at Readin. So, yeah, let's crack it open. That's a, uh, that, that looks like a 3D printed case. It does. I'll show you up close. <laughs> I swear. It's, it's it, I can see the layers. This is an interesting case for this uh, isolated differential analog current sensor. Look at this. Just pull those up there, like that. You are listed, of course. Um, and you just, whoa, look at that. Isn't that a neat bit of packaging you probably haven't seen before. I like that. And wow, that's pretty beefy, isn't it? <laughs> and this is the uh, this is the mounting base for it. So you need to screw that puppy on there and they even tell you what to talk up the nuts to. Nice. They know what they're doing. So maybe Phil can tell us uh, or give us photos of what's inside uh, this thing. Unfortunately, I can't because it's all potted. There you go. Secret squirrel, secret sauce in there. And there it is, 12.5 millivolts per amp output gives you up to uh, plus minus 2.5 amps uh, de volts out at uh, 200 amps. So that's very nice. So it'll go differential, of course, and it's fully isolated. So, uh, like, you could use it with almost practically anything, really. You just need to supply it from 3 to 5.5 volts. That's nice. You can uh, just run it from a regular, like, digital uh, supply. Excellent. I assume that's an off-the-shelf connector, but I haven't... Re I don't think I've seen that one before. I'm not sure if it actually comes with this uh, cable or not. You'd have to have a squeeze. But anyway, this is the uh, this is the runt of the litter. This is the 100 amp jobby. Uh, they do go up to at least 500, I think. But anyway, look at that. Wow, beautiful. Oh, it's as rugged as a brick dunny. Unbelievable. Um, <laughs> that's fantastic. I love that. Uh, yeah, obviously we've got power and um, a differential sensor output and that's it. And these cables feel awesome quality. I assume this is like an output cable, so I don't know why it has to be that beefy. But anyway, um, yeah, these are all, all the cabling, everything's very dressed very professionally. That looks 3D printed, doesn't it? But it almost looks too good to be 3D printed, but it's got that ridgy ridgy didge action happening. Yeah, it's 3D printed because, yeah, obviously, um, this <laughs> front panel bezel is 3D printed as well. Looks pretty neat, actually. They're obviously not uh, designing these for production, I would assume, or maybe this is just like a, you know, I assume it's just like a low volume engineering, um, you know, thing. I don't even know if you can buy this uh, receiver. Anyway, looks like it's got an off the shelf uh, touch screen, you know, one of those smart uh, touchscreen boards that actually contain like all of the, uh, what is it? A Nextron. Um, yeah, it probably contains like all the uh, smarts, you know, that does all the graphical user interface and, and things like that. There's plenty of those on the market. Nice. But anyway, um, this is actually quite well done inside. Just got our main switch. There's an Arduino Uno on there. Looks like they've custom designed their own board on top in there. And I, I kind of like it. They've, you know, this is a nice uh, way to produce a, a like um, either a one-off or you know like a small volume uh, run of like you know engineering uh, demo prototypes or whatever. You know, if you've got your new start whiz bang startup company and you want to you know show off your new uh, tech um, to your investors, then uh, you know something like this that kind of looks like uh, the business. Um, that would get the job done. That's really quite nice. Although, personally, of course, I would have just used, like, an off-the-shelf Pactech case or something, you know, <laughs> a million uh, cases of this sort of size and form factor on the market and then just, um, you know, cut the front panel out. So, yeah, I don't know, but neat. There we go. There's a better look inside it all. And that's neat. Of course, this is how you uh, power these things. Like, you just, like, don't care about uh, cost for something, you know, low-volume runs like this. So you just whack in something like this off-the-shelf uh, power brick. But, yeah, off-the-shelf power bricks like that, just really easy to integrate into a box like this. And there you go. You've done, done a custom uh, shield on top of that. Jeez, that's a tiny little pin pitch. What a little bastard that is. There you go. LT jobby. Anyway, that's our measurement ADC. Is it not? Yeah, I think they tell us. It's an LTC 2499, 24-bit ADC, even though I can't read that on my camcorder screen. So yeah, just design their own 
custom uh, Arduino interface and then that easily drives the LCD and that's a great sort of like, you know, low volume engineering solution. And phenol connector porn. Look at this. Oh, beautiful. All right, let's switch this bad boy on, shall we? Oh, look at that. Oh, straight in. Beautiful. None of that boot and rubbish. Smart shunt, current meter, and it connects via the Wi Fi's. Off. Hey, there we enter password. Default 444. <whistles> Offset voltage. Oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, I guess we should be measuring the offset voltage with our meter. Volts per amp. ADC scalar. Nice. Digital filter mode. Oh, that's exponential. Mean average. Number of averages, five. Sweet. Look at that. There you go. One milliamp resolution on our 100 amp current shunt. Sweet. And we can... Oh. Zero that out. There we go. Nice big gigantic font. Like I said, like is this a product that they sell? I mean, they're just selling their shunt. So I guess this is just like a demo thing for trade shows. Maybe I don't know if you ask them, they'll probably sell you one. Let's try it out. Nine point nine nine seven. Bang on to the least significant digit. Bit of a shame that it doesn't have any uh, graph capability or anything like that. It just networks over. Anyway, this really doesn't have anything to do with the actual product, which is the smart current shunt itself, the SSA one hundred and the higher uh, value units. And if you have a look here at the uh, data sheet, point one percent nominal accuracy of this thing, three hundred kilohertz bandwidth. It's sixty nine bucks at DigiKey. They got four hundred and seventy two in stock and so go for it and like 69 bucks might sound expensive for a current shunt but it's not this is fully isolated accurate takes out all of the issues uh, to do with like uh, remote uh, current sensing and stuff like that and gives you a nice differential output you can feed into any isolated output you can feed into any um, uh, sensor system so yeah that's terrific so yeah, in that regards, when you're building, you know, systems together, like 69 bucks for a sensor that takes all the R&D work out of, you know, you wouldn't build this into something that you're shipping in a million volume or something like that. But for some, you know, industrial uh, plant or something, you know, some big current system that you're sensing uh, that, or even something you're making in low volume, yeah, it's worth every cent. So that's a very nice bit of kit. Thank you very much, Phil, for sending that one in. It's a current shunt, but they're remarkably interesting. Well, I think so anyway. Hi to all my viewers in Deutschland, in particular Jan Barthelms, Barth... yeah, I'm not going to be able to pronounce that. Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, let's crack this. I don't have to crack it open. Somebody's already opened it. This is like, I, I would not have done this. I, I would not have done this, I swear. <laughs> I think somebody's had a look-see. <laughs> oh, postcard. Check it out. There's nothing written on back. And that's in German on the back. I don't know. 252 meters? I, I don't know. The Bonzens Lake? River? Thing? Cool. Looks good. Dear Dave, I'm a longtime fan of your channel. I'm a proud supporter. I love Fundamentals Friday. One of the first videos I watched was about the Seaback effect. Oh, yeah, I think that was a pretty good video. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, look at this, look at this torch. Oh, that's a, it's mains, it's a, it's a rechargeable, is it? A mains rechargeable torch here in Australia, none of that flashlight rubbish. Um, it's clearly not working. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, the bulb in there. Oh, crusty. Hands up if you're still using a bulb torch. Like, <laughs> oh, that's it. Oh, we've got some Audi, Audi catalog from Germany. And inspired me to build my own circuits, which eventually helped me change professionally. I went from mechanical designer to power electronics project manager. Awesome. Yes, I'm that guy. Real electronics engineers hate, and part of the blame is on you. Thank you very much. Please say this early 90s Soviet mains voltage rechargeable torch. I guess the circuit could not be any simpler. Maybe you'd like to explain that the batteries have died long ago, but the mechanicals still work. I really like the ergonomy the ergonomics. Um, yeah, it, it feels perfectly like, you know, weighted in that, like nicely weighted in the hand and, and the contours and grips are just, I, I like it too. 
And you know, a thumb operation like that, it's a Bobby Dazzler. Oh, those Ruskies. Look at this Bobby Dazzler from those Ruskies. Ah, beautiful. Ren Renook, something like that. But oh, good old fashioned bulb, who misses the bulb? Who's got a, who's still got a dolphin torch? Hands up, just a single screw to get it apart. They've got a lead in there, presumably for charging. <laughs> We're in. Oh, geez, they don't, uh, spared no expense. Look at that. Um, uh, yeah, that's got a, is that a, that's just one big cap. This is supposed to be like a mains thing. Straight in, they've got a mains, a, a capacitor dropper. Have they? 0.5 mic. Genuine Russian cap, I'm sure. Not yet. 91. Eighth week, 91. Uh, wow, that PCB. Oh, wow. Krusty Burger. Look at that. That's like Bakelite stuff. Um, I, they look like they're diodes. Um, the dots indicating <laughs> the anode or the cathode. Um, hands up if you know that package, because I don't think I've ever seen that package before. Anyway, it's it's fused for our protection, but yeah, obviously, um, it's just got a capacitor divider and a series resistor and a couple of diodes, and that's it. And these are our crusty rechargeable batteries. They're like NICAD or something, are they? Oh yeah, look. Minus 0.26, whatever that means, and what's the T people there are sort of getting friendly with each other. I don't know what the deal is there. Um, 90, is that 92? It's the year, perhaps, but I assume that is a NICAD, like, just three NICAD cells in this thing. Um, if you've got any details, I'll leave it in the comments down below, but, yeah, they're a bit, uh, a bit crusty now, aren't they? Ugh. So, yeah, it reminds me of the old uh, joke, whether or not it's uh, true, that uh, NASA spent, you know, millions of dollars developing a pen that worked in space, and the Russians, well, they just used a pencil. <laughs> it's just, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever seen something so crude and simplistic? Was this sold in volume? Uh, I know I do have quite a significant number of Russian viewers. Uh, please let us know if you ever had one of these. Was it like, it, was it for home use, or was it like, if you used in, uh, like, I don't know, some other, like, you know, specifically used for some industry or something like that? Please let us know, but thank you very much, Jan, for sending that one in. Um, there's not much to it, is there? <laughs> oh, goodness. Hang on. Did I say Rusky? Those pesky Russians? No, <laughs> was bloody Soviet Union back then. All the kiddies in the audience are going, uh, what's the USSR? Back in the USSR. You don't know how lucky you are, boys. Back in the US. Second suck of the sav from the old dart. Thank you very much, uh, Jay Newcomb. Um, I did not open this. I swear it came completely mangled like this with a, spoiler alert, a board hanging out. Like, I'm so <laughs> this is how it arrived. We have a board, or we have more than one board. We have multiple boards, and you know, I like... Wow, big fan of proto boards. You're on the EEV blog. You should always keep a bunch of proto boards in your kit of various types. And that one looks like a Bobby Dazzler. So I will take a closer look at that. Now uh, down to 0.5 mil pin pitch. And it's got, uh, yep, and there's all the, it's already got the goodness on it. Fantastic. Oh, excellent. There you go. So I assume, open this second, number two. Open this second. Oh, as in se this second, not open this second, not this second. If you know what I mean. Anyway, oh, oh, we've got more of them. Oh, oh, I love Prada boards. Oh, huge fan. There we go. Look at that. Another one. Beautiful. That's all. That's got all multiple different types. Oh, fantastic. These are going straight to the pool room. Ah, these aren't just proto boards, they're actually microcontroller proto boards specifically, although you could use them for other stuff as well, but they're more specifically designed for microcontrollers. And you can read all of John's uh, stuff here, but it's got all the goodness required to get a microcontroller up and running. So let's take a squeeze at uh, this main one here and 
check it out. So starting in the middle, we've got a 0.5 millimeter uh, pin pitch uh, quad array here. And of course, uh, they you stagger them like this so that you can get different um, size chips in there. You can get a smaller one or a slightly larger one or one bigger up to however many, what is it, um, 100? That's more than enough. I mean, if you've got a bigger microcontroller like that, then you're you know, probably not building it on a proto board you're probably like just doing like a custom PCB or something and then surrounding that you've got some uh, 0.1 inch pitch uh, stuff as well and 0 0.05 inch pitch stuff as well they don't actually connect to anything they just start floating so you can you know like put in a little connector or something like that speaking of which if you go up in the corner here there's actually a JTAG uh, interface or you know an in circuit serial programming uh, patch that you can just sort of patch into this thing and then the all of the pins they actually break out into larger um, 0.1 inch headers around the outside so you can you know connect all your IOs and whatnot um, you can even you know you could bridge them over to breadboards you could do whatever you want to do with them and there's some uh, regulation stuff down here in the bottom corner so you can you know put in a 3.3 or whatever volt uh, regulator and then if you didn't like your 0.5 millimeter pin pitch yeah, we've got some other packages on the back side, 0.5 millimeter, uh, jobby 0.65 millimeters, and uh, then just a, like a little SO um, footprint as well. And they look like they fan out to these ones over here like this. So you'd have to follow the money on that. But um, yeah, that's a really useful board. And there's a 3.3 volt loop going right around the outside. So you can actually, it's got little bridge pins in here, little solder bridge pins, so you can actually connect 3.3 volts to any of your um, I.O. pins, any of the pins at all, on your micro. And presumably can you do the same for ground? So it's almost like um, FPGA routing for your micro kind of sorta. <laughs> but yeah, that is neat. So he's got uh, an example soldered on here and labelled. So your microcontroller goes here. Oh, that could, is that in one of the arms that you can't get these days? <laughs> that could be worth like a million dollars or something. Um, have to desolder that, put it on eBay. Um, series termination uh, pins, of course. You know, this is not going to be useful for any sort of like high frequency work or something like that. It's not controlled impedance. It's only too late. Like there's no internal ground planes or anything uh, like that. But anyway, um, there's a regulator here um, it's got uh, scope uh, clips as well so you can put in like the little uh, ground loops in there for your scope probe um, it's and as I said it's got a JTAG um, interface down here and he's put a little lead up there we have a diagrammatic example here so the microcontroller pin there you go so you can look there's a cuttable pad like this and you can fit uh, like a, uh, like is it an 0603 or something package? Anyway, you can fit that in there and then that, that goes off the proto area. There's a solder bridge there, which, yep, goes down to ground, I thought so. And then, yep, solder bridge, uh, or two solder bridges can take you over to 3.3 and, uh, and a 0.1 inch header as well here. I Just a lot of flexibility in there. That's great. And he's put other practical examples, how you can put a low-pass filter, for example. Yes, you could. He's got a crystal on the backside here, so you can connect a uh, crystal and uh, the caps as well over to the pins. Nice. And you can strap uh, the pins to ground at 3.3 volts. And he's got exactly the same thing available in an SO uh, thing, up to 24 uh, pins, uh, different widths available. Very nice. And, yep, it's got the same sort of flexible routing on the back. And if that's not enough, well, there's one for almost every type of package <laughs> you can imagine. So you just buy this as a big panel. As I said, it's worth having one of these panels available in your uh, junk bin just for doing like hashing together little prototypes and stuff like that. So that is groovy. So thank you very much, John. There is the link, ebay.com, SCH, Sketch. Huh? John Newcomb. Thanks, John. Thank you very much, Affable Snake. It's from Affable Snake. Of course it is, in Houston, Texas. Fantastic. Hi to all my viewers in Houston. Never got to go to Houston. Um, we actually had a uh, facility in Houston um, that did for a job, and I never really got... I never went there. So, yeah, a bit disappointed. What do we got? We got a note, and uh, we've got a slim breadboard... 
I have no idea what a slim breadboard indicator, but I assume it's slim. It goes on a breadboard and it indicates. Thank you, Andrea, who's affable snake. I found myself in need an absolutely tiny lead bar graph indicator for breadboard use. Yes, been there, needed that. Without needing to deal with the added complexity of needing a resistor for every lead, yep, or the added space of an actual bar graph indicator. Yep, yep, yep. And decide to make a product out of it knowing other people would probably want similar. Yes. So he's included one as a fully assembled, but also sells it as a kit, a slim breadboard indicator, another classic thing which should go into your kit. Look at this, in, into your breadboard kit. Like I've bought a, like a breadboard, like a thing with all like breadboard accessories and stuff like that. And there's our common over there. And that just goes into the point one inch header. Ah, too easy. Well worth having. Thank you very much, Affable Snake. I'm sure it's going to work. Like I don't have to <laughs> do that. And there's our resistor network on the bottom. And geez, that thing is tight. What pitch is that? What a mongrel! <laughs> and we've got our $1 delivered item from Shenzhen. <laughs> you can just tell, and well, I can feel what this is. So, yeah. Thank you very much for the anonymous person, of course, who sent this in. And it's a... Does it actually work? Does it... Jeez, bloody hell. Can't, can't even get it out of the packet. Yeah. Done, done work! Done work! Doesn't even come fitted! Oh, you gotta put like an LR44 in there! Ah, oh, what a bummer! <laughs> Get it? I'm here all week! Oh, that just feels so cheap. I could like add a joke in there, but I'll, <laughs> I'll refrain. It's as cheap as a $2 eBay item. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh no, it did actually come with batteries. It just had a little cover on the top. Ah, nice. All right. It's still a cheap pile of garbage. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Quality mailbag items. Don't say people don't deliver. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I know what to do with the uh, widelerizer. Hang on. I couldn't actually get the motor out, but it's just going to have a countersunk on the end of it. I pulled the end cap off, but that's about all I could do, I'm afraid. Need a good steel plate in the lab for widelerizing stuff. Anyway, here we go. Oh, that's a tough, one tough SOB. Let's do it again. Wow. Hang on. There we go. Ah, now we're in. Yeah, I think my block of wood had too much uh, compliance in it. Anyway, yeah, there's our counter. It doesn't spin anymore. <laughs> Let's go figure. Um, yeah, it's just got a counterweight on there that just spins around. And yeah, well, that's it. It's a squishy motor now. Another one from the United States of America, which um, I is open, but I don't ever remember opening it. Anyway, thank you very much. I'm not sure the first name. Is it Gim? Pfeiffer? I'm not, I, I'm not sure because it's really strangely, but 13 years old and he watches my channel uh, with his dad who is uh, not with us anymore. Sorry to hear that. I am very grateful for your YouTube because I've been studying and practicing electronics for a couple of years now and I am older uh, and when I'm older I want to be an electrical engineer like you. Fantastic. You don't want to be like me, but you know, yeah. <laughs> electrical engineer, good idea. Or electronics, another electrical rubbish. And he doesn't have a voltmeter, um, so he's making these neck uh, ties, these necklaces, I guess it is, um, to try and sell locally uh, to uh, save up enough money to buy a multimeter. Uh, thank you for all your videos, Davy Jones. Enjoy your glow in the dark necklace. P.S. It glows really good if you put it under black UV for a few seconds. Thank you very much. Um, I, I, I can't get that first. Why can I not get that first letter of the first name? <laughs> I think it's Gim. At first I thought this was like, it, it's got a coil on it and it's got a ferrite. Looks like it has a ferrite bead in it. I think it's been beat up a bit in the post, unfortunately. So I can, oh no, I can wiggle, wiggle, yeah, that back together. But I don't believe it's going to actually do anything in that regards. It's just a glow in the dark 
necklace. So thank you very much. I have his address, and he's without a multimeter, so I think I'm gonna I've got a box of multimeters over here. I think I'll ship him one. Thanks, mate. All right, let's test the claim. Oh yeah, no whackers. Hi to all my viewers in the nether regions. That's the Netherlands. Um, <laughs> and in particular, I, I originally pronounced this turd wages, but it's TJ. I'm sure the J is silent, so I'm sure it's teared or something. Maybe, maybe it is pronounced turd. That would be un unfortunate, but thank you very much. Um, so let's crack it open, see what's in here. Oh, background hasn't turned off yet, has it? Oh, there is a note. <laughs> Probes stuck down all over the place. They are multimeter probes. They're two millimeter jobbies. That's interesting. I can get, get my old analog, my first multimeter, my first Tandy analog VOM uh, multimeter was a two millimeter jack. And we've got two millimeter to four millimeter adapters right off the bat. That is going to be handy. Yes, uh, black on red it works every time. And We've got a uh, little pogo pin. Are they actually pogo pins or are they just sharp pins? Nah, they're pogos. And we've got other little sharp adapters. Cool, always worth having once again in your kit, um, worth having like multiple, like different types of test leads for fine probing stuff, little easy hook probes and all sorts of uh, stuff. And you know, like banana plug to BNC adapters and all sorts of stuff. Anyway, it's been a long time fan since number 42. I can't remember what, oh, exploding caps. Yes, in slow motion. It's been 11 years, tell me about it. About time for uh, to contribute something. For the past year, I've been making multimeter probes which fit PCB work better than the large standard probes you get with a multimeter, hence Pico probes. He sells them on Tindy. Awesome. Let's check out Pico probes, LinkedIn down below. Oh, they're silicone too. Oh, none of that PVC rubbish. There you go. Scan that on your shoe phone and that'll take you over to um, Jerd's Tindy store where he sells these Pico probes. The probes are also replaceable, interchangeable for different shapes. I've taped and attached some serrated tips. Work very well on pin headers and rounded objects. And he prefers the 2mm banana in face over the bulky 4mm. I don't disagree. I like the 2mm. Uh, anyway, he's been watching since episode number 42. Thank you very much. So we have... Uh, here we go. Got lots of nice little tips. They're not... Oh yeah, they are pogoey. So you've got multiple different types of 2mm uh, to 4mm adapters here. So just whack those in there like that. And that's sweet. That's nice and compact. I like that. The only thing missing would be some um, easy hook interfaces. So how do we... Oh, stop rolling away. Bloody hell. Yeah, I think if we want to replace our pogo pins in there, we have to cut the heat shrink on that. What a bummer. But anyway, they... Look at those long probes getting those hard to reach places. Ooh, nice. And the silicone's wires, very nice. So there you go. That's a nice little bit of kit. It'd be nice if you had like a matching, as I said, like a matching little micro grabber um, attachment or something like that as well. That'd be sweet. Anyway, thank you very much. Check it out. The Pico probes. <laughs>